If you're joining us for the first time, hello and welcome. If you are a returning supporter and friend, welcome back. This is Unboxing Economics. Today we'll be talking about compulsory voting in Australian federal elections. We will discuss a brief history and why it was introduced, arguments for and against compulsory voting, a discussion on civil responsibilities, a brief history of the AEC, and a link to the two-party preferred system. Let's get straight into it. Compulsory voting was introduced in Australia in 1924. If you are registered to vote, that is, you appear on the electoral roll, you must vote in each state and federal election. Failure to do so can result in a small fine, about $20 as of 2020. Compulsory voting, whilst most synonymous with Australia, is by no means limited to Australia. Many other nations, 23 in total, have some form of compulsory voting. These countries include Argentina, Austria, Belgium, Bolivia, Chile, Cyprus, Egypt, Fiji, Italy, Luxembourg, Nauru, Singapore, Thailand, Turkey, Uruguay, with Peru, Ecuador, Brazil having optional compulsory voting if you are illiterate or over 70. Liechtenstein has compulsory voting but has no penalty for not voting. Each jurisdiction has slightly different voting conditions and eligibility. Each country has different penalties and attitudes toward people abstaining from the vote. Now let's look at some arguments for compulsory voting. Low voter turnout equals less representative government, which makes the practical functionality of democracy more difficult and less effective. This is one of the simplest and most basic of all civic responsibilities. A duty to have an opinion, you play a small role in the making of the country and the country contributes to who and what you are. Part of the reason for the introduction from an Australian point of view was to increase engagement and participation in the administration and running of the state by the public. In Australia, non-compliance is very minor, only around 10%, which does not represent a major infraction upon one's freedom, even for those who choose not to participate. Another argument in favour of compulsory voting is that marginalised groups are encouraged to have their opinions heard so the government can have full information of how the state ought to be run. Historically, people of low socioeconomic backgrounds, people of lower education, non-English speakers, other marginalised or minority groups have historically had less involvement in the political process. Compulsory voting significantly assists policy makers in putting forward broader and more representative policies. Moreover, if a candidate knew only particular citizens would vote, given the option to abstain, those candidates would tailor their policies to the smaller and narrower group of likely voters. And lastly, nations that have high or full voter participation tend to have lower corruptions or potential for corruption. Now let's look at arguments against compulsory voting. To force people to vote is a form of compelled speech and thus a violation against freedom of expression. This idea would very much fly in the face of a westernised liberal democracy. There is some evidence to suggest elections where there is no compulsory voting are cheaper to administer for two reasons. One, there is no fines to be handed out and number two, there needs to be less stringent supervision about who is voting, simply that an individual is registered to vote and has not voted multiple times in that same election. Another compelling argument against compulsory voting is that increased number of votes within the same jurisdiction does not necessarily lead to an improved quality of government or candidates. This argument depends on location. In Australia, we have a two-party preferred system where this argument could be made. Is a better outcome achieved by 20 million votes for two parties, more so than 12 million votes for those same two parties? Perhaps not. This argument does not hold in countries like the UK, which has several smaller but still major parties. The argument could well be the opposite, that more votes could indeed lead to a better outcome. 
An interesting side note about the two-party preferred system, compulsory voting, regardless of the arguments, is very unlikely to ever be removed from Australia. This is because both the major parties get some money from the Australian Electoral Commission, funded via the taxpayer, for each vote they receive. If both major parties are for an existing policy that they both benefit from, then why would they strike it down? The current rate is $2.62 per vote. Just over $62 million was distributed after the 2016 election. The Commonwealth Electoral Act was passed in 1902. Since then, the electoral process has been administered by several different departments. The Australian Electoral Commission, AEC, was introduced in its current form in 1984 for the purpose of running and administering elections at a federal level. Each state has its own equivalent electoral authority. These are politically neutral and are publicly funded. If your objection to voting is the time taken or the fines associated, then I'm not sure how to respond to that position. Let's talk a little bit about civil responsibilities. There are four main civil responsibilities in Australia. Number one, jury duty. Number two, paying taxes and generally abiding by the law. Number three, defending Australia when required. And number four, voting. I consider all of these a very small price to pay to live in a country as well run, as safe and with as much liberty as Australia. Many modern people talk extensively about their civil rights and infringements of their own individual freedoms, but very little is spoken about the extent to which those rights only come about because of civil responsibilities. On a personal level, I do not consider voting to be a right. I consider it to be a civil duty, an obligation to contribute to one's country. This has been Unboxing Economics. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And remember, as always, history is more than just a bunch of stuff that happened. Thank you for watching.